massive solar flares are hitting Earth, causing blackouts. Imagine losing all your power and GPS for hours. What does this mean for you? Welcome to the People's Perspective, where we unpack what matters, decoded for people who actually think. Keep watching till the end for the happy news of the week. May this year, the biggest solar threat hit our planet, causing a radio blackouts. Yes, for a full 10 minutes, radios were down across the Middle East. Even NASA is warning about ongoing flares and eruptions. These events pose serious risk to radio communications, power grids, GPS signals, and even spacecrafts and astronauts. Before we dive into the hard facts, let's set the stage with some essential context. So keep watching for the juicy knowledge afterwards. This all ties back to the sun reaching the peak of its 11 year activity cycle. Its magnetic field is weakening and its magnetic poles are about to flip. Yes, not only is Earth's magnetic pole flipping, the sun's is too. What does it mean? Check out my previous video for deep dive. Meanwhile, the Sun is rotating and its most active region is turning to face Earth. That gives solar eruptions a direct path to us, increasing the chances of more blackouts. And since Earth's magnetic field is weakening, our only shield is the atmosphere, so stay protected from all the UV waves. This isn't the first time solar power disturbed our planet. Back in 1859, the Carrington event triggered a geomagnetic storm so intense that telegraph system across Europe and North America failed. In some cases, telegraph wires overheated or caught fire. There were reports that the telegraph operated without batteries and kept humming for the whole day. If a similar event hit today, it could cripple our power grids and take years to recover. We might be time traveling back to 19th century during the reboot. Though, have you ever seen the Aurora Borealis life? I haven't, but now might be the best time to look up. The same solar activity that brings disruption also gives us the stunning natural light shows. Expect more of them. But solar flares aren't just pretty lights in the sky. As we just learned, they could shut down modern civilization for years. The real danger lies in the what most people don't understand about how these flares work. So don't be like most people, subscribe to this channel. Now let's get into the juicy knowledge stuff. Research into solar storm began after the Carrington event of 1859. You know, the one that burned wires, left continents disconnected. It was such an impactful moment that scientists began studying solar activity and its effects on Earth. So what have they found out? The umbrella term for this phenomena is solar storm. The solar storm is a sudden release of energy, particles and magnetic films from the sun. When one heads straight for Earth, it disturbs our magnetic field, causing what we call a geomagnetic storm. These storms can mess with electricity and communication systems, but they also create those beautiful auroras. Why do solar storms happen? NASA uses the metaphor of morning hair. You know the kind. When you carefully wash it the night before, get a good night's sleep and still wake all those tangled strands of hair, they represent magnetic fields. As the sun rotates, its magnetic fields twist and tangle, kind of like your head tossing around the pillow at night. Eventually, the tension becomes too much, the fields snap, and in hairdresser world nightmare, they reconnect, releasing a massive amount of energy into the solar system. Let's focus back on these eruptions, as they cause three, three key phenomena. First one, solar flares. A solar flare is a burst of radiation from the sun, releasing energy across the magnetic spectrum 
X-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet light, radio waves, and visible light. Solar flares are the biggest explosions in our solar system. The most powerful can pack the punch of a billion hydrogen bombs. They are classified by strength, from A, weakest, then through B, C, M, stronger, and X, extreme. Where is the Carrington event on that scale? It was an X-35 flare. X-35, what? <laughs> what a plot twist. What does 35 mean? Hit that like button if you're shocked to find out that there is an extra scale to classify those strongest flares. That's weird because X-class flares are additionally rated from 1 to 9. Some researchers suggest it could be as high as X-180. Imagine that. 2. Radiation storms. So you think nothing could be more disturbing than a massive X-ray explosion? Think again. Because radiation storms take it to the whole new level. Solar flares can also launch electrons and protons at extreme speeds, triggering radiation storms. These storms can reach Earth in just 30 minutes. What do they do? Penetrate our magnetic field, especially near the poles, north or south poles, ionize our atmosphere, disturbing radio signals, damage satellite electronics and solar panels. They pose radiation risks to astronauts and polar airline crews. No amount of sunscreen on Earth, not even SPF 100 can help with this. The last phenomenon we will talk about today is coronal mask injections. A CME is a massive burst of plasma and magnetic film from the sun, corona. They often look like bubbles erupting from the sun. And if you thought it couldn't get worse than those two previous guys, CMEs can supercharge radiation storms, induce currents in power grids causing outages, expand Earth's upper atmosphere, increasing drag on satellites, slowing them down, and lowering their orbit. But there is something good about CMEs. They are responsible for the creation of stunning auroras. So thank you, CME, for the auroras. While solar activity can bring beauty to the night sky, it also carries a real dangers. If a massive storm hits, we may lose the modern world as we know it, at least temporarily. But that's just the nature's raw power. What if the real blackout isn't coming from the sky, but from the words we trust the most? In the next episode about democracy and real meaning of that war, we will break down the power of labels, how laundry shapes our percep perception, and why what we call democracy may not be what you think it is. If solar flares can knock out satellites, what can a single war do to an entire society? Keep watching next as we will check out our comment section afterwards and as we will wrap things up on a positive note with the happy news of the week. Thank you for staying until here and as you probably liked it, like the video please. Dear viewers, thank you for all the comments and that you keep watching my videos. It's so exciting. It gives me energy to work on the project more. Maybe you noticed, but the structures has changed a little bit this episode. This should help you to enjoy the video more. So let me know what you think about it. Uh, and I wanted to say that the next few videos will be pre-recorded as I am finally going for a uh, holidays. I will be on the road trip uh, through my mother, uh, through my motherland. If you want to keep touch in touch with me, uh, I may post some stories on my Instagram. So please follow me there. Link in the descriptions. And uh, this means that this is the last comment section uh, before I'm back. It will be at in the end of the June. So let's get to it. <laughs> we have few new subscribers. Thank you all. 
Big shout out to uh, Resistor8735, Brad Griffon, and Victoria Morland e U8Q, who were so kind to subscribe and leave the comment below. I hope we will meet more often. Brad Griffon also wrote about his experience in talking with different people from different backgrounds. He says they have all discussed the end of the world from different perspectives, but in the main, uh, whoa, it's me, attitude and blaming everything from the industrial revolution to meteors to divine intervention. And he says, I am more concerned about my grandchild and generation into the future, no matter what natural event before us. We need to concentrate on making our produce waste, emission, garbage, etc. cleaner for the future of our descendants. So I just wanted to say I have no children of my own, but I think about all other children and the generations afterwards. And I have the same thoughts on uh, on this matter. This is uh, why I made that channel, actually. So I hope some other people are interested in the mix of topics I want to share with you here from the scientists um, like we do now to the political discussions as we will do in the next video and uh, we will also have some video about ecology so if you like my content please subscribe or maybe even share it with your friends to uh, spread awareness thank you for doing that Italy just made a huge leap forward for pet travel. Large dogs are now allowed to fly in the airplane cabin next to their humans. That means no more stressful or risky cargo holds for big spurps. The new rule doesn't set a weight limit and lets pe pets travel in secured carriers in the cabin. Finally, a move that puts animal welfare first. Now, a quick reality check. This Change doesn't yet sweet dogs as big as a Labrador or my Samu, since most areas will likely still require carriers that fit in a limited space. And no, it's not obligatory. Individual analysts will set their own rules. But still, it's a definite step in the right direction. Let's hope the rest of the world catches up soon. Bravo, Italy! Thank you for watching till the end and as always, stay informed, stay engaged and remember, knowledge is the key.